Until now, Vertigo Games was probably best known for their 2017 release, Arizona Sunshine. It was a pretty basic zombie shooter and had a ton of rough edges, but no matter how many complaints you could lodge against the game, it was hard to deny that playing through the campaign in two-player co-op was a total blast. So it's no surprise that Vertigo doubled down on multiplayer this time with their long-awaited follow-up, After the Fall. And while the four-player PvE gameplay will probably satisfy Left 4 Dead fans, at least temporarily, a good number of gamers will likely tire of the gameplay loop and be looking for more content within just days of purchasing it. After the Fall rightfully ditches a strong narrative in favor of a heavy focus on multiplayer and player interactions. Now that won't stop your four characters from shouting one-liners and calling each other by name, which never felt like it made sense considering we're all already talking to each other with the in-game voice chat. I mean, why do we need canned voices that yell out, nice shooting, or cover me, I'm reloading? Can't I tell my teammates that? <laughs> okay, you are a good shot! Luckily, it's all background noise while you fight your way through each level, killing literally thousands of zombies, or as they're called here, Snowbreed. The Snowbreed will jump in from all corners of the map, spawn in from behind cracks in the wall, and climb up from any nearby ledges. In other words, they'll do whatever it takes to get to you. It's impressive how many can be on the screen at once, and taking them down with headshot after headshot, or even better, blowing away 20 at once with a well-placed pipe bomb, can be extremely satisfying. You won't see a ton of enemy variety here, there's only a few different types of Snowbreed, though on harder difficulties, most of them will have ice shields, preventing you from pulling off easy headshots. But none of this would be nearly as much fun without friends, so luckily the entire campaign can be played with three other people online. You start off in a cross-platform social hub, where 32 players on PSVR, Quest, and PC VR are all randomly thrown together into a lobby, and it's clear that this just didn't come together the way that it was supposed to. There's no voice chat in the lobby, making it tough to figure out who's looking to party up and impossible to know if your teammates are still customizing their weapons, AFK, or ready to go. Luckily, if you have friends that you're planning on playing with, you can ignore the lobby system altogether and use the super simple in-game menu to add friends to your party, whether they appear in the social hub or not. But even once you party up, there's still no voice chat here until after you get into a level. And every time you come back to the hub to complete missions or customize your weapons, the party automatically disbands, forcing you to re-invite all three members back into your party. It's needlessly frustrating and doesn't make any sense, especially for longer play sessions. Go. Unlike the somewhat more cohesive campaign of Arizona Sunshine, the world of After the Fall is divided up into five separate zones to teleport into and then play through. There's a little variety here, as some take place in apartments, Chinatown, a morgue, or whatever, but when everything is covered in snow, it starts to look a little too similar from place to place, and your memory of each area will start bleeding into the next. That aside, it's a decent looking game with enough detail to satisfy most gamers, a pretty cool flashlight to add to the immersion, and I gotta say that I really enjoy the 80s inspired visuals and soundtrack. Hordes of Snowbreed are lurking around every corner, and from a technical standpoint, I'm really impressed with how many are thrown at you at once. Taking them down is pretty standard for a zombie shooter. You've got six weapons to unlock and take with you, along with pipe bombs, a hand-mounted rocket launcher, and health. All of which you can find strewn throughout levels, or purchasable with in-game currency at safe rooms. Each area takes about 20 to 25 minutes to complete, but the problem with After the Falls levels isn't the length, it's that there's almost nothing to do. Other than surviving, your only real goal is to find these floppy disks that, at the end of each level, will give you a random upgrade for one of your weapons. These can be anything from better sights, grips to reduce recoil, or larger clips to increase ammo capacity. So you'll be playing and replaying each of these areas dozens of times on harder and harder difficulties looking for the disks, and hope that you'll unlock something of interest. And far too often you'll get duplicates, something you already had, meaning you just wasted 25 minutes of your life for nothing. But the real shame here is that if you're forced to replay the same level over and over, why not give me more reasons to play it over and over? A post-apocalyptic environment is ripe for scavenging resources, for crafting items, for buffs, weapons, permanent stat upgrades, anything that would give me a reason to revisit the same places again and again, each time with a different objective. But there's none of that here, making the entire experience feel overtly shallow, so you better have good friends by your side who want to stick with you, because this is one grindy-ass grind. Backside. 
this alone wouldn't have been the end of the world. But all of these complaints really come to a head when you realize that there's no end game. All of the work that you put into upgrading your weapons is only so you can play on harder difficulties and continue to keep upgrading your weapons. But for what? It would have been great if there was some Breath of the Wild element where right from the start you had access to some massive final boss that would have been impossible to beat without maxing out your weapons or strategizing with your friends. But instead you're left with nothing to do. Even worse, the bonus 4v4 multiplayer mode is just there. There's nothing to write home about. And for a game about zombies, none are included here. How could you not have a PvPvE mode? Plus, even with patch 1.04 installed, After the Fall is still riddled with random bugs, like the inability to progress or spawning into the world without guns, and still suffers from crashes on harder difficulties. Right now, After the Fall feels really light on content. The $40 price tag insinuates something nearing AAA quality, and so far there's none of that to be seen, from environmental diversity, number of maps, enemy variety, a gameplay loop that goes nowhere, and a mind-boggling social hub that exists just to exist, and doesn't even really do that terribly well. The plan here is to deliver more content on a regular basis, and I'm rooting for this game big time. Zombie shooters by nature are fun, so I want this to get better. But so far, Vertigo Games has under-delivered and grossly overcharged. Yep, good. Here comes another one. Lock him up. 